you seen? Why are you alone, woman? My son. He's only 12. He's... Our kids are nowhere. It's Jerusalem. You from here? No. We came for the Passover feast. We thought he was in the caravan. The feast was three days ago. Jesus! Jesus! Mary. <gasps> Ima? I looked everywhere, day and night. We were so scared. I told him. He's okay. Why is everyone so upset? Mary, he was in there. You were supposed to be riding in the caravan with Uncle Abaita. I was supposed to be with my father. Then why weren't you? I was. <sighs> you were in the temple? It was incredible, Mary. You should have seen him. He was teaching when I found him. The rabbis, the scribes, the scholars, they could not believe their ears. They barely let us leave. Didn't you know I must be in my father's house? It is too early for all this. If not now, when? Just help us get through all of this with you. Please. Jesus, his mother Mary, and father Joseph traveled to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover every year. Traditionally, they traveled in large groups as a community. When Jesus was 12 years old, he didn't join his group on their departure for home. Three days passed before his family became aware and began searching for him. They returned to Jerusalem where they finally found him in the temple, where he was wowing the teachers with his knowledge of the scripture. When Jesus' parents questioned him, we hear for the first time the indication of Jesus' mission here on earth. Why are you searching for me? Jesus responded. Didn't you know I must be about my father's business? Jesus understood his divine privilege. He was God in flesh. However, he had to endure the same growing pains we all do. He had to develop and become a man. As is written in the book of Luke chapter two, and Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. Meanwhile, his mother treasured all of these things in her heart. 18 years later, a lot has changed. Mary has buried her husband, Joseph, Jesus is now grown, and word of his ministry is spreading. A humble carpenter is becoming an influencer, and people are starting to pay attention. Meanwhile, there is a celebration scheduled, a wedding in Cana. Mary and Jesus will both be attending. Perfect day for a wedding, huh? Master. Simon, Andrew, Mary, James, John, Thaddeus. But where is, uh... Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Raining figs. Figs? For the journey. Ah, now we won't even need to stop for lunch. The lamb meat will be there before or after we arrive? After. They don't have a good place to keep it, so I didn't want it there too early. But are they going to show up? With plenty of time for you to roast it your way. Yes. Wait. Mm. There's only three jars. Yes. That's what they asked for. Reima, I am very concerned we won't be able to get all three all the way to Cana intact. I told you, we needed four from your vineyard to be safe. I told you. The wedding family can't afford it. I would have paid you out of my own pocket. Thomas, that would almost erase your whole margin. Why would you do that? I, I, I mean, we're a team, right? Well, I think everything will arrive perfectly intact. Especially with how carefully you drive. I just want to be certain that Thomas, every... 
That's going to be fine. In the midst of this great occasion, one person is not celebrating, Thomas. Thomas is focused on the things that might go wrong, the things that could spoil this special event. Have you heard from your special guest? He's coming. He may bring several others. Is that okay? Jesus can bring everybody he wants. I haven't seen him in ages. How is he? He's good. He's, he's always good. I'm ecstatic for you. <laughs> Imagine he's a fine craftsman. Well, he's not working. He has a calling. I seldom know where it will take him. He's bringing students. Mm -hmm. I bet he's handsome. Mm. Bet he is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, Simon. I was thinking, mm. if this wedding is worth a journey for you, who has so much to do, mm. perhaps it is also worth a journey for many wealthy Jews. You believe important and powerful Hebrews will be there? Possibly. I'm very keen, son. The most important and powerful person I know will be there. Yeah? My mother. Isn't your mother from Nazareth? You should announce this after the guests, right? I mean, there'll be no Romans. Seems like the perfect place to gather more followers, get this whole thing moving. It's not my special day, Simon. It's the special day of the couple, Asher and Sarah. They are blessed to have you at their wedding. Do they know what a remarkable thing it is? Well, considering that I was the clumsy teenager who cracked my head open at Asher's when he was a child, I don't think he finds me remarkable. Did you think much of your childhood friends? No, he didn't have any. That's not true. <laughs> I stand corrected, he had me. Compulsory service. I don't remember kids exactly lining up around the block. Mary, Ooh. did you think that having brothers would be like this? I always wanted brothers as a little girl. So when you will have 12, then tell me how you like it. 12? You'll see. Moment of truth. I made Rafi spend everything we had left for good wine. So wish me luck. You must be Thomas. I am Rafi. This is my wife, Dinah. Many blessings to you on this joyous day. And may I present the finest, most beautiful vintner in all of Galilee, Raima Bat Kafni of the Kafni Vineyards on the plains of Sharon. It is an honor to meet you at last. You will give my regards to the old scoundrel upon your return. <laughs> Reima is the daughter of my old friend, Kaf. The wine is here on time. A good start to a joyous day. Of course. Thomas is never late. My father sends his warmest regards with this. Pressed in the time Augustus died, cut with seawater, honey from Mount Hermon, black pepper, and pine from Tyre. Fine. I certainly won't refuse that. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the fruit of the vine. Oh my. <laughs> Thank heaven on Arsher's day. Abner and Hila will be pleased. Maybe a little jealous even. Oh. Abner and Hila. I am now in debt because of wine for Abner and Hila. Gosh. How much is there? Of the special vintage, there's two amphorae and one of a lesser. Of course, we intend to serve the best wine first when the guests are fresh. Later, when everyone is stuffed and senses dulled, we'll serve the remaining jar. Do you understand? <laughs> yes, son. It's the oldest trick in the book. <laughs> we are in good hands. And I assume the head count is still the same, 40 or so at the time during the week? Is it? I'm asking. I'm sure it's right. Perfect. Where would you like us to set up? This way. The master of the banquet will walk you through it. Knock, knock. Can we come in? Hi, <laughs> Ima. Oh, how are you? Oh, I missed you. I have missed you. Look at you. It's been a while. Have been eating? I have been eating. These people have been helping me to eat. So Hi. How are you? Thank you, Stephen. I'm James. When the song is over, bring out the olives and the cheeses. Set them on the long table in between the loaves of bread and the cucumbers. Thomas! 
in a moment. Thomas! Okay, okay. Hi. Am I going mad, or has 40 been the magic number all along? The head count? Why? Are we over? They always do this. I brought food enough and more. The last count was 80. You made a mistake. Maybe by a few. Even if I'm off by five, the wine. I did advocate for a fourth. But three is, is still enough. Four to sixty. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the fruit of the vine. Amen. 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 Weddings during this time period were a multiple day celebration, and wine was an important piece of the celebrating. In Jewish culture, wine represented sanctity. So to run out of wine would be embarrassment, a failure not only for Rama and Thomas, but for Rafi and Dinah, the parents of the groom, who among other things were trying desperately to impress their son's new in-laws. Lighten your pores, like this. Three quarters full. If they ask you for more, tell them you'll be right back. But guess what? You won't be. Understand? Well, the guests seem to be happy so far. The servants do not. How are we doing? Nothing to worry about. You are one of the finest banquet masters we have ever seen. Keep up the good work. Hmm. <laughs> Purification water. There's still some left in these. Dilute the wine. People will notice. Whispers will spread. If they did, I feel like this family would die of shame. What about us? We'd be ruined. It's not a great option, I agree. So help me think. We could serve the guests extra date cakes, oversalt the food, make them thirst for water. I don't know. This is humiliating. Looking. Thomas is growing increasingly desperate. As the celebration moves into the evening of the first day, his problems are mounting. In the meantime, Jesus' travel companions are learning more about each other and their teacher. They have no idea who sits before them. be a child again, yes? <laughs> I think we are the lucky ones. They have to go home with their parents tonight. We get to stay with him and his mother. Where will that be? Who knows? With him, I have learned to stop worrying about those things. I haven't. It's cold in this region. You think he would let you freeze? My brother has many worries. I keep reminding him of when our Abba taught us how to fish. We just sat there and watched until we became fishermen. Mm. We will watch him. And watch and watch and watch. Forever, I think. I'm going to get more wine. <laughs> get two. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm here. It's usually the students that choose the rabbi, not the other way around. And I'm not even a student. Neither was I. Thaddeus introduced me to him. How did you meet? <laughs> On a uh, construction job in Bethsaida. He hasn't exactly been picking the best and brightest students. <laughs> what? He works? Well, until recently. He's not a professional rabbi. Yeah, but I thought he has no home and no job. No permanent home. He's a stonemason. Like you. A craftsman. He taught as well. He asked me to follow him. He said he was building a kingdom. A fortress stronger than stone. I believed him. What were you building in Bethsaida? <laughs> uh, uh, a public amenity. An aqueduct. 
No, uh, but something uh, humbler. What then, man? It's, it's not proper to say in front of a woman. I have seen and heard things that would turn your blood to ice. A latrine? <laughs> Wait, ice? Yes. Our master building a privy. A job <laughs> is a job. I've, I was cutting stone for the retaining wall. He, he was building a ramp of cedar planks so the crippled and the elderly could get to it without climbing the steep stairs. But well, why didn't he heal them so they could mount the steps themselves? He's always saying his time has not yet come. Calling your name, the catch of the fish. Why was it his time for miracles then and not others? Because those were private. He, he hasn't shown his signs to, to others publicly yet. What's keeping him from making his ministry public? The wind blows to the south or to the east and you cannot say why. <laughs> A latrine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we better not spread that around. Jesus had expelled demons from Mary Magdalene. He had filled the nets of Simon with fish. Yet these acts had been private, personal, deeds that Jesus did and acts of service for those who would eventually follow him. His miracles and his ministry were not yet fully made public. He was still a mystery to many, even to those who had heard whispers of his power. Jesus knew the moment he began to perform miracles in public, that would be the moment that set the stage for his journey to the cross. Thomas, talk to me. My son, they've run out of wine. But it's only the first day. Yes, and it's all gone. Not a drop left. Why are you telling me this? We can't let the celebration end like this. And the Etcher's family humiliated. Throughout his life, Jesus would face enormous doubt from the people who met him and heard of his ministry. He would face doubt about his teachings. He would be called a blasphemer. He would be challenged as an enemy by mankind to the God he called Father and to whom Jesus was called Son. Even as he healed the sick, brought sight to the blind, and fed the hungry, and helped the paralyzed walk, he was surrounded by those who did not have faith. In life, he would be surrounded by doubt. In death, he would be surrounded by suspicions. In resurrection, he would be surrounded by disbelief. There was one person, however, on this earth who could not question Jesus' divinity. This person was his mother, Mary. Mary was a young woman favored by God, was visited by the angel Gabriel. As Gabriel delivered the news that she would give birth to a son, Mary doubted his words. How will this be, she asked, since I am a virgin? Yet Gabriel reminded Mary, for nothing is impossible with God. Even Mary's betrothed husband, Joseph, would question the lineage of this child growing in her womb. Joseph's reaction to the virgin's pregnancy was understandable, especially considering the customs of the period in which they lived. He offered divorce in order to spare Mary public humiliation. Yet Joseph too would be visited by a divine presence whom told him that Joseph would raise a child who would grow up to save the people from their sins. Mary knew all along her son was special, gifted in many ways that were beyond the ways of this world. But for the first time, Mary would ask her son to use his supernatural gifts. Mother, my time has not yet come. If not now, when? Please. If you've ever been to a wedding, you've likely heard 1 Corinthians 13, 13. So now faith, 
hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Mary asked her son for a miracle because she hoped her childhood friend, whom she loved, would not be humiliated on such an important day. And she had faith her son could provide. Jesus, in spite of his hesitation, complied with his mother's wishes because of his love for her. So now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Fill these jars with water. I'm not sure you heard her clearly, but we've run out of wine, not water. These are similar in size to your own four eye. The prudent marks, yes. Equally filled all the way to the brim. You're a very responsible person, aren't you? We are in a crisis, and I was led to understand you have a solution. Do you know why jars for purification rites are made of stone? <laughs> what? You heard me. Because the stone is pure. Less likely to stain or break, and it can't be made unclean. Yes. Fill these jars with water all the way to the brim. Why? You heard him. Start drawing water, quickly. Tell anyone you find to stop what they're doing and help. From the directions you have provided, I see no logical solution to the problem. It's going to be like that sometimes, Thomas. What did you say? I do not rebuke you. It is good to ask questions, to seek understanding. There's no time for this. I know of a man like you in Capernaum, always counting, always measuring. That's my job. And that people will think I have not done well tonight. Join me. And I will show you a new way to count and measure. A different way of seeing time. Go with you where? I, I don't understand. Keep watching. In his desperation, Thomas is hopeless. He sees no solution to the crosses unfolding in front of him. Thomas is no different than any of us have been at some point in our lives. Many of us have been in that place. It's that place where our bank account is tapped and we don't know how we're going to make food or rent. It's that place where the deadline is approaching and finishing the project seems impossible. It's that place where our marriage is crumbling and no matter what we do, how we try to make things right, in the end, everything leads to arguments and bitterness. An ocean of doubt floods over us. We try to swim, but the waters pouring over our heads seem too overwhelming. Our lungs cry out for oxygen. Our arms flail in desperate attempt at escape, but it is no use. We cannot save ourselves. The book of James says, but let him ask in faith without doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. In these moments of doubt and desperation, instead of leaning into our faith, we lean into ourselves. And we always find that lacking. This is because we have incorrectly placed our faith in our own ability instead of Jesus Christ. Jesus too, in this moment, dealt with his own feelings of doubt. Was he ready for what was to come? The journey in front of him would change the world. A savior would rise. But there were many miles between then and now. In many ways, this was the first step on a long journey. 
Was Jesus of Nazareth ready to become Jesus Christ? Once the first step was taken, once the first hammer was chiseled into the stone, there would be no going back. Everyone, please step outside. Just for a moment, Thomas. Once you make that first cut into the stone, it can't be undone. It sets in motion a series of choices. What used to be a shapeless block of limestone or granite begins its long journey of transformation. And it will never be the same. I'm ready, Father. Some out and serve it to the master of the banquet. Stop the music! Stop the music! Everyone, listen! I have something I would like to say. I would like to address the bridegroom and the bride families. At every wedding I've ever overseen, they serve the best wine first. And then, when the people have drunk freely, much later in the feast, they serve the poorer wine, the cheap stuff. <laughs> because by then, who is going to notice? <laughs> Am I right? But you, you have chosen now to serve the best wine I have ever tasted. Let us thank them for this unnecessary but honorable gesture. Usher, son of Rafi and Dinah, to Sarah, daughter of Abner and Hila, be as pure and as fruitful as this wine. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the fruit of the vine. To Asher and Sarah! To Asher and Sarah! I love this part 
This is a special moment between Jesus and his mother. Mary was concerned about the festivities, the guests running out of wine, but she knew her son could provide. And provide he did. Her worries and anxieties in the moment were alleviated when Jesus spoke the word. Today, he is still stepping into our lack, our worries and concerns, and taking moments of hopelessness and creating miracles of hope. should be it for the night. What did they care for? Who is he? I can't pretend I didn't see a miracle. He gave us even more than we need. He invited me to join him. He wants us to meet him in Samaria. In 12 days. Samaria. I don't know what you think. So don't. Maybe for once in your life, don't think. As you have seen today, Mary and Thomas faced a choice. Would they be willing to set their lives aside, their professions, their dreams, their security, to follow Jesus? Throughout time, people have accepted this commission and others have not. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 and verse one says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. We today don't have the luxury of physically watching Jesus turn water into wine. Yet if we look around, we can see miracles. We can see the miracle in a child's smile, in the warm embrace of a loved one during a difficult time, in the generosity of a stranger that comes when it's needed most. These miracles do surround us. Evidence of God's love is present everywhere we look. Yet we still need to make a personal decision to follow Jesus. Have you made that decision? If not, will you make it now? You too can be transformed through the power of Jesus. But you have to make a choice. He turned water into wine. He wants to turn your life around from death into life, a new creation. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation, the scriptures say. Will you receive him now? And will all of us learn to trust him with our doubts, our concerns, with the things that we can't control so that he can turn something that seems so helpless into something that is hopeful? Would you close your eyes and bow your heads with me? And I wanna pray over you. Father, I thank you for those that are listening right now. Some of them are making a conscious decision to follow you and make you Lord of their life. God, your word says that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, we will be saved. And so God, others are just struggling with circumstances of life. They need a miracle. But whatever their miracle it is that they need, it comes by trusting you and looking to you. And so God, I pray that each and every person will look, not look to themselves, but look to you and trust you. It's in your name I pray, amen.